Uh, our next company has, uh, I'll, I'll nominate for the, 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 the cleverestly uh, named uh, company of the day, uh, Gray Matter. Um, the space here is the sort of uh, 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 huge burden of information that exists at the FDA and other regulatory bodies that needs to be digested by the regulatory affairs people at uh, uh, big medical device companies or, uh, or big pharma. It's a challenge of ever increasing complexity and, and one where sort of metadata and big data analytics can really be helpful and, and, uh, and make a difference. Here to chat with us are um, Merle Sims, the C uh, CEO, and uh, Melissa Walker, uh, CTO. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Good afternoon. We're very honored and excited to be here. It's, uh, it's hard not to be excited when you are surrounded with all this uh, innovation that we see emerging around in this conference. It's been a tremendous uh, conference, and we're pleased to very, very pleased to be here. We're going to be introducing to you today the Terry Regulatory Intelligence System, and as the name implies, uh, it is a system that is involved with uh, the regulatory processes uh, that demonstrate the safety and efficacy and, and effectiveness of medical products. And I think it goes without saying that uh, whatever anyone can do to shorten the time frame and, and make it more efficient for bringing these, these uh, life-saving and quality of life uh, changing kinds of products to the, to the general public uh, is, is going to be beneficial for everyone. And so that's what the, the, the focus of our system is. And there have been a number of studies that have, that have uh, actually calculated the value of doing so. The challenge is that uh, what we've seen over the last number of years is, th is that the trend is actually going in the other direction. As these uh, review times have been lengthening out uh, more and more each year, and uh, this was recently confirmed by a GAO study. Uh, and, and the FDA has done their own study on this, and they have uh, concluded from their study that the, in the majority of these cases, it was due to uh, insufficient submissions. Uh, now, uh, these insufficient submissions were uh, part of, it. they would say there was either some data missing or there's incomplete data and information, or perhaps it was structured incorrectly. There's a lot of different reasons. And so being that we're part of a uh, uh, health data conference, you might ask, well, is this, is this pointing to the fact that there isn't enough data available for these regulatory staffs to, to submit these submissions? And of course, and if you really dig down into it, you find that the problem is not that at all. Uh, in fact, what you find is that there's been an absolute explosion of data uh, over the last seven or eight years. And we really need to commend the FDA for being kind of ahead of the curve and really putting a lot of this data out into the, into the public uh, for use. In fact, uh, if you talk to some of the uh, old time uh, regulatory managers, they'll tell you that we've gone from a situation in, in the 1990s, early 2000s, uh, of, of a scarcity of data and to the point now where they're actually experiencing the equivalent of an information overload. Uh, and so, and it's not, just the, it's not just the quantity of the data that they're having challenges with, it's all of these data sources, as you can see listed here, just a partial listing, that they need to check or refer to whenever they're doing their uh, pr preparation for a regulatory submission. So, just to give you a sense of what this process looks like, this is a, a process flow diagram. It's actually been simplified in order to be able to fit it onto a slide. But it gives you an idea of the, process, the search process that they would go through to be able to find this data that they need. And it's roughly the equivalent of a, uh, a lawyer that is, is going back and reviewing a lot of case law in order to know how to structure their case and how to argue this case in court. Uh, and what we find, uh, what we found in our research is that these regulatory uh, professionals uh, that are uh, working on this spend an average uh, these days of around 8 to 30 hours uh, doing this kind of search for the information that they, they may need. And that brings us to the Terry system. Uh, the Terry system is the first to pull the data from uh, dozens of these databases into a, into a single database. 
and with a, the use of a specially designed cross-referencing system, uh, a searcher can now uh, pull together all of the relevant and related documents into, into one single report uh, around a given search topic that they may uh, be interested in. And what we've seen is that this is typically now reducing that search time to less than two hours. But much more importantly than this is the fact that it greatly reduces the chance of missing uh, critical information that might be scattered in uh, any variety of, of databases and data sources. And in fact, uh, uh, there's absolutely no way that on a given search that they can even begin to search all these different uh, databases. And the second thing we've, uh, we've observed is what this really uh, allows them to do is by pulling all of these documents into a single report, it gives them a much better uh, overview of the, of the situation and allows them to see key correlations and key connections between what would be otherwise very disparate sets of data located in a variety of locations. And finally, what we've observed is that uh, a regulatory professional that's, say, got average uh, years of experience or even less can, can with the Terry system, can now develop uh, search results that are equal to or superior uh, something done by a, a highly experienced uh, regulatory professional uh, doing it in the, tr in the traditional manner. And so we're really quite excited about this uh, system. We think that it has the, the potential of really elevating the, the, quality, the quality of these uh, regulatory uh, submissions. And we've gotten uh, extremely uh, good feedback from the regulatory professionals we've shown this to so far. And we think we have the real chance of bending that curve backwards that we were talking about earlier. And so with that, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Melissa to give a brief demonstration. Thank you. As a regulatory professional for 26 years, I can tell you that we deal with a lot of complexity every single day in our jobs. And having the data being complex is, uh, and scattered is, uh, is, has been challenging. It's, not, it's important to understand that we not only need to know what the regulation says, we need to know the intent, we need to know the application, we need to know how it's being applied, and we need to know the history. So if we could change to the uh, iPad demo, okay. Um, Terry, this is a prototype version that you see here um, that has been developed and includes only about 10 of the information types that will ultimately go in, which numbers over 100. This is intended to be a very simple, you can do a very simple broad search, or you can search within one of the individual or more of the individuals. So we're gonna look for a company. Company is Allergan. And you see it brings up all the hits of Allergan, even though I didn't type in Allergan Inc. It, it, it does locate all of those categories so that I can now easily eliminate the ones I do not want to look at. And we have a list of Allergan addresses and facilities that are associated with the use of that that you can scroll through. And also regulatory events. Now a regulatory event is, can be anything. It's something that happens that gets documented. Um, you can see a list of warning letters. You see uh, 510Ks, that is a, a device application. Then there's a drill down to look at individual data, some more specific about this particular submission and the product. And you'll see three tabs at the top. There's a data, a related data, and a source document. And behind the source document is an actual summary or any kind of document that is related specifically to this, to this uh, submission. Now in related data, remember companies, products, and people if there are companies and products and people noted in this document, in this regulatory event, they will be called out separately here so that you can now follow them or trace them through to their activities, if you like. So we'll look to see that Paul, in this case, Paul has written quite a few 510Ks. We'll go back to Allergan. Now the other, the other lovely thing about, um, about this is that this doesn't, reaches out beyond uh, FDA. 
This regulatory intelligence system and the patent that supports this regulatory intelligence system covers all regulatory agencies and regulatory data. So this can go out into, in this case, for a corporate integrity agreement, out into the Department of Justice and the Office of Inspector General, where you can locate the actual integrity agreements uh, and review those, and also other documents that are related, such as the press release that was, um, and the, the press conference that was held when uh, it was announced. Uh, you can also go all the way back into the legal documents and find the original complaint that was associated with the, what triggered the investigation and subsequently the uh, corporate integrity agreement. There is also, of course, ways to generate reports. So if you want a summary of what you've got, you can also export it. You can put it as a PDF, print it. It has a variety of ways that you can then use the data um, however you may want to use it. So providing medical products, and I've spent my career providing important medical products and therapies for patients is absolutely critical. And the better that you understand the requirements to provide to any regulatory agency, the better submissions you can put together, the better testing you can do, and the faster that products will get to the patients who need them. So I thank you very much. Very much uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here. Uh, happy to take any questions at this time if you have any. <laughs> nope. I do have a question. Uh, Just a quick question. Um, in terms of the 510K, um, clearance process. Do you have the information on the predicates that are involved in each of the devices if they're based on a predicate? Um, yes, we would have that as long as that has been reported in a summary document. So that is uh, information that is extracted. If I can run the iPad here. It's information that is extracted and in, 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 in conjunction with also the indications for use statement. Um, in this particular case for the one that I have up here for this, uh, the contact lens, it was not specifically cited in the summary, in, in which case it, that information is not readily available. But if it's available in the summary information or in an FOI request, that information will be there. All of the fields, any of the fields are searchable. So if you wanted to, for instance, search for a particular 510K, you could type in that K and you could find all the devices that were associated with that as a predicate. Got a regulatory question, yes. <laughs> Anybody okay. else? Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay.